In the year 2011, a web novel series was released on the Let's Become a Novelist website titled The Apothecary Diaries. It was a genuinely interesting mystery story set in Imperial China hosting an endearing cast of well-written characters which proved to be insanely successful. The story was soon adapted into a single volume novel the very next year, followed by an official light novel series that began in 2014, which received two separate manga adaptations in 2017, one of which won the next manga awards in 2019, beating the likes of Chainsaw Man in the process, and lastly a CD drama adaptation. adaptation was made in 2020 by the time mid 2022 rolled around the collective apothecary diaries franchise had a whopping 18 million copies in circulation the series was so huge in fact that at one point it had literally become one of the highest selling manga light novel titles without having an anime adaptation but then on the 16th of february 2023 after 9 years since the light novel series had first released an anime adaptation of the apothecary diaries was finally announced norihiro naganuma was the man put in charge of this anime as the director all he had to do was follow the source material properly not mess up this adaptation in any way and everything should have gone smooth sailing given how beloved the story already was but norihiro didn't want to play it safe and simply adapt the story as it was and so instead with the cooperation of his team he set out to breathe life into this adaptation and turn it into something special for both the fans of the light novel series and the newcomers to the story this was quite the risky and effort taking task but it paid off massively Because 7 months later we got ourselves a well produced wonderfully directed and an absolutely beautiful looking anime that became one of the highest rated mystery shows of all time broke all sorts of sales record for the source material and gave us possibly one of the best written female characters we've seen in anime in a long time This is Momo. She's an apothecary who lives a peaceful life with her dad near the red light district where she often hangs out to experiment with medicines and poisons. On a random day of exploration to find some herbs and flowers, Momo unfortunately gets kidnapped and sold off to the rare palace where she is forced to work as a servant lady. As much as this sucks for Momo, all she really has to do now is keep her head down, work diligently, do whatever she's told to do, and she will be free from her duties in the rare palace in a couple of years. The only problem being that Momo is a little too curious for her own good at times. After hearing about a rumor regarding a supposed curse that takes over the lives of every children born to the concubines of the emperor, Momo quickly figures out the real cause behind those deaths and warns the concubines of the harmful cosmetic powder that was responsible for poisoning their child. Momo's brilliant deduction skills and her knowledge of poisons not only ended up saving the young princess's life but also promoted Momo to the rank of a lady in waiting, a poison tester to be exact. This turns out to be the perfect job for Momo because not only does she love poisons, but stuff like unknown diseases, mysterious deaths, and attempted poisonings are common place in the rare palace. All things our apothecary Momo specializes in, meaning that whether she likes it or not, it is now up to her to figure out and solve many of the mysteries surrounding the rare palace. Despite being a detective story of sorts, Apothecary Diaries remains fresh throughout each different arc of the series. Since the anime takes place in the unconventional setting of Imperial China, it creates room for some unique mysteries that are specifically tied to that place and time period. Yet, as interesting as this premise sounds to be, the mystery aspect of the show is not the actual driving force behind this anime's success. Because what makes me and many others appreciate Apothecary Diaries so much is the fact that Mao Mao actually has a personality. I don't think you need me to remind you that in shows like MHA, Naruto or Demon Slayer, the female characters either have no personality whatsoever or are used as generic trope archetypes to fill up empty space on screen. There's already a ton of videos criticizing the badly written females in anime who are often one-dimensional fan service bait characters with no major role to serve in the story other than being a sidekick or a love interest for the true main character. Luckily for us, not only is Apothecary Diaries a scene in anime, but it's also written by a female author. An author who is extremely extremely good at writing characters. The most obvious example of this being Mao Mao herself. Mao Mao is the kind of person who can carry the entire show all on her own. Even from her very first introduction alone, you can tell something is different about her. Being kidnapped and forced to work in a brand new place is a situation that would make anyone panic out of their minds, and rightfully so. I imagine it's not the most fun experience one can have, but Mao Mao seems to act indifferently to her dire position. She keeps a straight face throughout the entire process and almost immediately gets accustomed to living in the rare palace. The reason for her almost strange behavior isn't because of a stupid reason like she doesn't feel any emotions, but because this is the kind of world she was born into. One where your life as a female belongs only to serve customers or to become a servant. Momo knows this better than anyone. She has observed the horrors and unfairness of the pleasure district up close, a place that isn't all too different from the rare palace. And so no matter the situation she ends up getting roped into, Momo always looks at her circumstances objectively and finds a way out of any discomforting situation through her sharp-mindedness alone. 
this part of her personality bleeds into her thirst of knowledge, her love for anything apothecary related, and her unspoken wish to help out the ones in need, which are all traits that make her a great detective. Personally to me, Mao Mao feels like a female version of Hikigaya Hachima, only a lot more unhinged. She is intelligent, she has major problem solving skills, her inner monologues are quite interesting, she makes a lot of snarky comments, her over enthusiasm is fun to watch, and yet she is flawed in her own life threatening way, which makes her feel less like a character on screen and more like a person who might really exist in real life. And the best part is, Mamo isn't even the only well thought out character in this anime. Jinshi is introduced midway through episode 1 as this handsome, almost self centered eunuch of the Rare Palace. Eunuchs are. um. Eunuchs. Males who've lost a pretty important part of their anatomy and trusted to keep the peace. Y- yeah, that. Initially, Jinshi finds Mao Mao to be a useful tool because of her knowledge of medicine, someone who he thinks will fall for his prince-like charms the same way everyone else does. But to Jinshi's utter surprise, all of his pretty words and forced seduction fail to impress our poison-loving apothecary time and time again. If anything, she's only repulsed by his advances each time he tries to get close to her. From this alone, it's easy to look at Jinshi as being a powerful individual who prides himself on his looks and uses others to his advantage. But every single moment he spends with Mama from then on ends up completely changing your perception of him as you slowly realize that he isn't cocky about his looks, he isn't some stupid self indulgent prince in power, heck, he's not even a eunuch. Instead, much like Mama, Jinshi's got a functioning brain on his head. He knows how to work his way around people and get them to do what he wants using the tools he was born with. We have to use whatever we have in this life. Jinshi as a character is far more interesting and complex than being some stupid pretty boy who likes to use others to his advantage. And this kind of complexity can be seen in almost every other cast member of this mystery anime, no matter how important or insignificant their role in the story might be. There's Gyokyo, Gaosho, and Liwa, One Punch Granny, Lakan, who are all people with their own distinct personalities having a hidden layer of both warmth and ugliness to them. Almost everyone in the Rare Palace especially is cunning in their own different ways. Some by nature, others out of a need to survive. Because those in the Rare Palace who rely on others are easily targeted and trampled on by their peers in their constant struggle for power. This means that a lot of the times, the odds are brutally stacked against our lady-in-waiting slash servant girl Mama, who doesn't outrank anyone and is constantly bullied for her looks. <laughs> You watch your filthy mouth, wretch! Yet no matter how serious her circumstances might be, Mama never complains or lets her emotions take over. Unless it's about poisons. Then she cannot contain her excitement. Besides that, she's someone who prioritizes working with the rules and efficiently taking advantage of them in any given opportunity, as opposed to outright standing against the injustice of the palace. But it doesn't mean that she's a timid little girl who cannot take a stand for herself, because if push comes to shove, Mama won't hesitate to put her foot down and get the job done. I think that's the real reason Mama's character works so well. She might be a poison addict self harm inflicting morbidly curious gremlin at times, but Mama knows exactly what she wants in life and always stays true to her moral values regardless of how the world around her behaves and treats her. Though as cruel as this show looks on the surface, it is actually surprisingly wholesome and lighthearted than you might think. Welcome back home, master. 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 <laughs> Some of the episodes are spent entirely around progressing the story further, where Momo simply goofs around for a bit with no real mystery for her to solve, and it's still damn entertaining. The show is also quite stylized when showcasing comedy, which I think especially adds to the charm of Momo's ridiculousness. They occasionally draw the characters in this cute little chibi form, and sometimes the voice actors will even make the sound effects by themselves. I trust you have been busy with studying. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> I love this so much. As for the production side of things, I think this hand wave scene alone should tell you how fluid the animation is. The show generally looks great. The soundtrack fits the theme and setting of the Apothecary Diaries almost perfectly. But in the moments where it truly matters, these two elements come together and the show goes from being simply great to outright gorgeous. Not only does this adaptation have a shit ton of anime original content sprinkled in between each episode, but the director went out of his way to meticulously place every little detail on screen. From the way the lighting interacts with some scenes, to the beautifully drawn poison food, to even the different colors of clothes worn by the concubines all have a meaning behind them. Take for example how every flower shown in the first opening is either toxic if not straight up lethal, just the way Mama likes them. Also the reason Mama is depicted as a cat during the syllabus is because her name literally translates to cat cat. 
Even after 19 episodes have passed, The Apothecary Diaries hasn't even adapted two of its light novel volumes, whereas the latest season of Classroom of the Elite has already blown through two entire volumes in just five episodes. This anime doesn't skip through any of the light novel content, no matter how trivial it may be. Like for example, the first half of episode 17 is all about Mama applying makeup on Jinshi. That's 12 minutes of content which could have easily been shown in a few second long montage if they wanted to rush through the light novel. But because the director actually cared, about this adaptation, we ended up getting a detailed explanation of how to make a noble look like a peasant, involving a whole lot of funny moments. All of this is to say that if the director had truly wished to create an anime that did something a little more special than simply adapted source material, then I would say he achieved his goal. This adaptation elevates the source material not just by being extremely faithful to it, but by further building on the characters in some anime original scenes and by adding its own style and flair to the story, which is why the sales of the manga increased by over 7 million copies copies in just 4 months. That alone should spell out how successful of an adaptation this has proved to be and it's all thanks to the high amounts of effort put in by every single person behind this anime. The Apothecary Diaries might not have the most engaging mysteries or the most deep storylines, but it still works because of its original plot and brilliant production values. It's a show that takes you through some disturbing scenarios surrounding some dangerous people that lead up to some emotional moments at times, while simultaneously being one of the most fun shows that I personally look forward to every single week. You seriously need to watch this anime, even if it's just for Mawa. I honestly can't recommend it enough. Also consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. That's it. Thanks for watching.